Why is it that it seems so many scientists lie to the public? Uh, hello, my name is Wallace Smith, and welcome to tomorrow's webcast. And let me qualify that a bit. I'm not talking about getting up necessarily and being purposefully uh, deceitful. Uh, I, I'm really not, but it is frustrating. And articles like I read here from BBC World help to highlight it to me. Um, anyway, let me just go, go into the article. It's an article titled, Life May Actually Be Getting Better at Evolving. And don't just write this off, please hear at the beginning, as just some attack on evolution. I'm not actually here, believe it or not, to attack evolution. I'm actually not. Please bear with me. Uh, let me read this article. It was uh, dated March 2nd, 2017. And it starts off, in 1996, a young graduate student called Richard Watson sat down to read a paper on evolution. The article was provocative. It tackled a long-running problem in evolutionary biology. We do not fully understand how organisms can adapt so successfully to their environments. Creatures do not seem to be merely at the mercy of random changes or mutations in their genes over time. Instead, they actually seem to improve their ability to adapt. It seemed this ability was not explained solely by the process of natural selection, in which the best traits are passed on by the most successful organisms. Um, without going into a great deal of detail, let me summarize, and it is fascinating research. I'm actually excited about the research, believe it or not. I hope the research continues, uh, but let me summarize it. They talk about how it seems as though our genes, the genes and life on, on planet Earth, possibly, it's just a theory, it hasn't, it hasn't been validated actually in experiments in the wild, only in computer models as a possibility, but the structure of genes and their regulatory mechanisms seem to display characteristics similar to neural networking, how we've, we're creating programs that can learn similar to how neurons seem to work in the brain. Not exactly, but similar. And you look at these neural networks, it's how Google is learning to translate different languages, etc. And the structure is reminiscent of what we see in the genetic code, uh, which I think has its own implications given how hard we're working to make neural networks. But had, there's these structures in the genetic code and their regulatory mechanisms. And the idea was, is it possible that the genetic code somehow learns? Uh, they have a model based on Hebbian learning theory, for instance. Uh, the, the possibility that old adaptions that were discovered to be successful might possibly be stored in the genetic code, kind of like things are stored in your neurons or in a neural learning network, so that they can reemerge under the right conditions if needed. It's, it's really fascinating. Again, there's no evidence out in the wild, no experiments yet in terms of empirical evidence, but computer models suggest it as a fascinating possibility. Uh, let me get into this. This particular scientist, uh, Watson, mentioned earlier, it says, for Watson, this helps to get around a sticky problem in the theory of evolution. Now, what he describes here is he makes an analogy. He says, if, if our genes are like computer code, then imagine what a computer programmer can do. You want a program to continue to be successful, and so you keep rewriting bits of it. Here, you write this bit, rewrite this bit, rewrite this bit, and the computer keeps getting better and more and more successful. But he points out that even computer programmers recognize that the result is what they call spaghetti code. Just a mess of a program that begins to be incomprehensible where you virtually have to completely shut it all down and rewrite it from scratch and make it clean. Uh, and so he makes an analogy because the way evolution has been understood, random mutation, natural selection, the result would be essentially spaghetti code in the genetic code. Again, this is his analogy, it's not mine. And so he comments, uh, the article comments uh, using his quotes, if organisms actually evolved this way, says Watson, quote, their evolvability, their ability to adapt to new stresses or environments would be rubbish. But in fact, quote, the ability of natural organisms to evolve to new selective environments or challenges is awesome. Okay, here is my issue. Take a look at the, the comments, like at the beginning. It talks about how there was a, how random mutation and natural selection, quote, uh, that the ability to adapt was not explained solely by those things. Here we talk about a sticky problem in the theory of evolution, a long-standing problem it's described. And then you have this scientist point out that as we understand evolution coming up till now, things couldn't survive. The ability to adapt would be rubbish if it were just this approach of mutation and random selection. Okay, 
I have issues because there's this pattern when it comes to discussing science with the public where there's problems and challenges, but you don't hear about them until there's some kind of solution they think they have. And then those who mention those problems publicly are castigated, sometimes mocked. People who, anyone else who would have said this, like an intelligent design theorist, and they had said, if you look at the theory of evolution, mutation, natural selection, the ability to adapt to your environment with just those tools, oh, that's rubbish. It would never work. Now, it'd be one thing for scientists to say, you know what, you're right. You're right. But we really have faith in this theory. It shows so much promise. Uh, give us time. We'll probably find solutions. But too often I have seen the opposite. I've seen where the people who say so are mocked, where they are ridiculed as science haters and, and I would just say disbelievers, if you will. But then all of a sudden someone has a new theory and they're willing to admit these weaknesses. It is inherently dishonest to do that. If scientists lament the fact that the public is not trusting so-called experts as much as they used to, then the experts need to learn to be honest. Stop politicking. Stop fretting that, well, if we admit this, what are the creationists going to say or the intelligent design theorists so we can't admit it? Just be upfront. You know, the Bible says in the commandments in Exodus chapter 20, thou shalt not lie. Even if you don't believe in the Bible, you want the public to trust you? Consider Exodus 20. Thanks for watching. Please check out everything we have available at tomorrowsworld.org.